Episode number 47 Verja was mistaken, for next day she made a discovery, which produced a tempest. Meg, Beth, and Amy were sitting together, late in the afternoon, when Joe burst into the room, looking excited, and demanding breathlessly, Has anyone taken my book? Meg and Beth said, No. At once, and looked surprised. Amy poked the fire, and said nothing. Joe saw her color rise, and was down upon her in a minute. Amy, you've got it. No, I haven't. You know where it is, then? No, I don't. That's a fib. Cried Joe, taking her by the shoulders, and looking fierce enough to frighten a much braver child than Amy. It isn't. I haven't got it, don't know where it is now, and don't care. You know something about it, and you'd better tell it once, or I'll make you. And Joe gave her a slight shake. Scold as much as you like, you'll never see your silly old book again, cried Amy, getting excited in her turn. Why not? I burned it up. What? My little book I was so fond of, and worked over, and meant to finish before father got home. Have you really burned it? Said Joe, turning very pale, while her eyes kindled, and her hands clutched Amy nervously. Yes, I did. I told you I'd make you pay for being so cross yesterday, and I have, so. Amy got no farther, for Joe's hot temper mastered her, and she shook Amy till her teeth chattered in her head crying in a passion of grief and anger. You wicked, wicked girl. I never can write it again, and I'll never forgive you as long as I live. Meg flew to rescue Amy, and Beth to pacify Joe, but Joe was quite beside herself, and with a parting box on her sister's ear, she rushed out of the room up to the old sofa in the garret, and finished her fight alone. The storm cleared up below, for Mrs. March came home, and Having heard the story, soon brought Amy to a sense of the wrong she had done her sister. Joe's book was the pride of her heart, and was regarded by her family as a literary sprout of great promise. It was only half a dozen little fairy tales, but Joe had worked over them patiently, putting her whole heart into her work, hoping to make something good enough to print. She had just copied them with great care, and had destroyed the old manuscript so that Amy's bonfire had consumed the loving work of several years. It seemed a small loss to others, but to Joe it was a dreadful calamity, and she felt that it never could be made up to her. Beth mourned as for departed kitten, and Meg refused to defend her pet. Mrs. March looked grave and grieved, and Amy felt that no one would love her till she had asked pardon for the act, which she now regretted more than any of them. When the tea bell rang, Joe appeared, looking so grim and unapproachable that it took all Amy's courage to stay meekly, 